Welcome to Citing with MLA, a video presented by me, Kate Cushion, the English Liaison Librarian at the University of Regina. The first thing we're going to talk about is the kind of information that you need for MLA style citations. Basically you need information that is going to help your reader locate the source of the citation that you're giving them. You're going to need to know the author or authors, the title of the piece that you're citing, the title of the larger work if it's different from the title of the piece, so for example if you're citing an essay from a book or an article from a journal. You're going to need information on the publication, so the volume or issue numbers of journals or the name and place of publication for books. You're going to need to know the year of publication and finally the medium or format of publication, and usually this will be print or online. In-text citation is an important part of MLA style citation. It's also called parenthetical citation. It's called author page style in MLA because what you need is the author's name and the page number of what you are citing. The author's name allows your reader to locate the entry in the work cited list and the page number allows them to find the exact quotation from the book once they have it in their hands. This is what it will look like if you are citing from a work by the author named Smith from page 263. You either have to have the author's name in the body of your writing or you have to include it in the parenthetical reference that comes immediately after the citation. If you have multiple works by the same author, you need to be sure to include the shortened title to differentiate them. So for example, if you were writing a paper where you had two works by Smith that you were citing, you would include shortened titles like the ones that I have here as an example. It should be noted that there are extra rules for when you are citing from a book with no known author, when you're citing from a book with multiple editions, when you have authors with the same last name, when you have indirect citations, or when you're citing from non-print sources. So if any of this is the case, please see the MLA handbook or the other resources that I'm going to go over at the end of this video. The work cited list is the second big part of citation with MLA style. So your work cited list comes at the end of your paper and you're going to include all of the works you cite alphabetically by the author's last name. You're going to be using hanging indentation as you'll see in my examples. If you have more than one work by the same author, you're going to list them alphabetically by title and replace the author's name with three dashes in subsequent entries. Again, it should be noted that there are some special rules for things like the Bible, government publications, pamphlets, and dissertations and theses, and so if you're citing from any of these, see the MLA handbook or the other resources that I'll direct you to. So how do you include books in your work cited list? This is what a basic book entry looks like. You'll see that there's hanging indentation, which means it is indented after the first line. You start with the author's last name and their first name, then the title of the book in italics, then publication information and the medium of publication. If you're citing from an essay or a chapter in a book, then you have the last name and the first name of the essay's author, then you have the title of the essay, the title of the book that it's in, the editor's name, and then the publication information and format. Again, there are separate rules for if you are citing from multiple, a book with multiple authors, corporate authors, no author, if you're citing from a work that has been translated or edited, or using other print sources. So again, please consult the MLA handbook or the other resources for the rules on that. Citing articles is done slightly differently in your work cited list. This is what the basic article entry looks like. You have the author's last name, first and then the first name, the title of the article, the title of the periodical, and then the rest of the date information as well as the medium of publication. If you're quoting from a scholarly journal article, you need to make sure that you have the volume and the issue numbers in there as well. There are, of course, other rules for magazines and newspapers and for reviews that you may find in periodicals, so be sure to consult the MLA handbook or other resources in order to get those rules. If you are citing from stuff that you found online, there are different rules for that. Make sure that you're not including the URL in your citations or in your work cited list. URLs tend to be too long and most people are able to find what you're citing from if you give them a few pieces of basic information. So the information that you are going to want to include in your work cited list, if possible. The author or editor names, the article name in quotation marks, the name of the website, project, or book in italics, 
the publisher information, including the name of the publisher and the date of publication, the version number, revision dates, posting date, volume or issue numbers if you're able to find them, and of course the date that you accessed the material. So if you were to cite an entire website, this is what it would look like. You'll see that we've included as much of that information that I was just mentioning as possible. But really there are lots of different rules for different kinds of materials that you will find online. So it is in your best interests to take a look at the MLA handbook or one of the other resources to make sure that you have the information that you need for that kind of resource. So how do you get your hands on the MLA handbook? This is what the cover looks like. You can buy it online or at the University of Regina bookstore. You can also get it in the library. Almost all of the University of Regina libraries have it in their reference section. This is the call number for it. And if you are having if you don't have any paper or pencil with you right now to write down that call number, just go ahead and ask at the information desk. They'll be able to point you in the right direction. So the additional resources and help that you can consult if the handbook is not answering your questions. The LibGuides on the library website can be a good resource for MLA style. If you click on the Start Your Research Here link on the right hand side of the library homepage and then click on LibGuides, you can come to this page. There is a LibGuide for citations called How Do I Cite, which includes information on MLA style citation. You can also take a look at the English LibGuides, which have information on citation with MLA. Another excellent source online for MLA style citation is the Online Writing Lab or OWL at Purdue University. They have a guide to MLA. You can either Google that or you can find links in any of the English LibGuides. You can also always ask questions of your professor, a reference librarian, or your friendly English liaison librarian. That's me. There is my contact information. If you have any questions about anything that I've gone over in this video, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Good luck with your research.